Yes, we have uh, two uh, special goals. The one is we try to uh, from the uh, self-help studies to the uh, subjectivities of indigenous studies because a uh, long time ago indigenous studies always by, are, are done by the outsider. Uh, right now we encourage indigenous people they can do it by, uh, on their own. Uh, but at that time they, they may need some professional training to provide that uh, in this courage. Uh, the other one is uh, for uh, focusing on indigenous cultures, language and development. Because if we try to set up a develop, uh, the department for uh, courage, uh, if we take off the culture or language, I think uh, it's really not to really indigenous cultures. So uh, it, we always uh, stop on the traditional way and don't think about the dynamic changing to really frozen indigenous culture. It's not what we want. So we think development is very important. So at that time, we have three departments that are set up. Uh, we think it's the core uh, uh, value that like, uh, indigenous cultures we want. To, uh, they have a study base so we can keep on researching and uh, we have a language department, we have a development department. And uh, our, at that time, uh, our students, we have half indigenous and half majority students. So it's kind of an artificial environment because usually it will not happen uh, if we uh, all the students they are selected by the uh, entrance exam. Uh, so we set up uh, half of the indigenous students, they can go through this uh, special way we can interview them, give them some uh, tests. So we choose good indigenous students for us. But for the other half, uh, majority students, they just go through the entrance exam and we find other students that are interested in these issues. Okay, so uh, we're trying to uh, make this is kind of safeguarding uh, indigenous cultural integrity within a national university. At that time, I uh, designed the uh, uh, indigenous courage. I think it's very important to put it in, to a national level because if it's in private uh, level, they may need a lot of government uh, sponsorship. And uh, also, at that time, we don't have really uh, enough indigenous elite. They can become our professors. So uh, we still need uh, some uh, majority uh, Professors, but we uh, give the indigenous uh, professors a uh, priority. If they are very good, of course we can choose them. Um, this college, would, uh, we are trying to keep the balance between indigenous education and multicultural education. Because for the uh, indigenous people, they think uh, maybe the indigenous education is very important, but for the majority of students, uh, they may put uh, in the thinking of multicultural education, so they choose our uh, courage to study as their majors. And at that time, we are trying to make our uh, uh, courage become the forever tribe. That means uh, we will not make the tribe disappear. We hope it will be there forever. And uh, also, uh, we try to encourage our students to go back to serve uh, their own tribe. So uh, they are not like the original way people get higher education. They stay in the urban area and then, uh, don't have any chance or they do not like to go back to their tribe. So the tribe always uh, uh, in a bad situation. And right now we're trying to encourage more young people to go back, uh, work for their own tribe, and then we can uh, make the tribe uh, getting better. So uh, in the beginning, I think we need to have, uh, as a majority uh, person, we need to have the humble uh, attitude. So we uh, set up the, uh, our goal, like we have to learn from the tribe. We have to uh, teach everything that are rooted in the tribe. And, uh, we have tried to become a bridge between the tribe and the university. That's why we have the slogan for every tribe for our uh, uh, courage. So this is the, right now, our courage situation. We have three departments. We, uh, as, uh, the, for the Department of Ethnic Relations and Cultures, because we set up earlier, so we have a uh, full program. We even have PhD program. I think it's very important because right now we have many indigenous uh, PhD students that are working on uh, their own uh, research. So I think it would be great influence for the uh, indigenous studies. 
And for our curriculum, we are not like only for one discipline, so we, call, we, we name it as interdisciplinary, and we try to uh, put uh, across uh, cultural issues, and we, uh, we hope it's related to demands in the multi-ethnic society in the global world in Taiwan. So, uh, so at that time, we think indigenous education is not only for indigenous people, but also for the majority. We discussed this yesterday. So we're trying to make uh, people can participate, they can be productive, and we have uh, equal members of the uh, society. So we have some uh, course design. We have the foundation program for the college, and it's a kind of uh, required courses. At that time, we think it's very important for all the students, they have to take classes like introduction to Taiwan's indigenous peoples, because set up this class in the formal education. Uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, start at the beginning, because usually uh, for the anthropology department, we only talk about that, but we don't really have a special subject to talk about that. So uh, at that time, we think the uh, students need to know the uh, indigenous peoples of the world. So we put this as a required courses. And so we think culture and the party is important, uh, ethnic art, journalism, political science, ethnic relationship, study skill, linguistics, ethnic language, society, uh, society, uh, sociology, and uh, cultural campus. Some kind of these courses is very important. So we put this as a required courses. And for uh, the department I come from, uh, we have two uh, groups. One we call it multi-ethnic groups. The other we call it culture and performance uh, group. We provide different uh, courses for uh, our students. Uh, this is written in Chinese. Basically, uh, we have our department co uh, 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 courses, and we have uh, that two special uh, curriculum. And this is the foundation. As for the foundation courses, we have uh, basic uh, uh, ethnic uh, languages. Uh, when we set up here, uh, in the beginning, people do have some debate. Uh, some Japanese scholars ask me why the Han people need to learn uh, ethnic uh, languages. Why it become required? Then I have to explain it to them, and I think this uh, this is very important because for the majority of students, they get a chance to learn uh, tribal uh, ethnic languages. It's a very uh, uh, essential uh, requirement for an for an anthropologist. If they want to do the their research in the uh, ethnic area, so I think it is no question. But at that time, some people really doubt about it. We have to fight for it. Unfortunately, it's safe. Uh, at that time, we have some problem to hire the uh, ethnic language teachers because uh, they don't usually don't have the university uh, background. So we have to tell them they are the only one they can translate their languages. Uh, the professors they don't really know. So uh, right now, there's no problem. Okay. Uh, this is our uh, whole programs, and uh, the next de uh, department is. Uh, Indigenous language and communication. They have their aim. They try to understand of indigenous cultural history and language. They have master indigenous communication theory and community social practice. Uh, kind of program. Okay, if you're interested, you may find on our website. And the third one is um, focus on the development. But at that time, we think social work is also very important. So we uh, accept uh, uh, development. Uh, we set up the undergraduate program of indigenous social workers because they really need uh, social workers for indigenous uh, communities. And because the student can get license for it, so right now this program becomes the most popular program in our college. So uh, we have a lot of courses and we have many design. I think uh, if you are interested, you can find more. Okay, so uh, right now I'm introducing my uh, research is uh, uh, between 2013 and 15. The, the, uh, it's an integrated uh, research program. We name it Tribe Basis Indigenous Higher Education. I think you, I don't need to explain more. You know how important it is. 
So at that time, we have two uh, basic goal to we try to draw important implications for indigenous higher education. We are trying to compel uh, education, invest in uh, social changes, and exploring community development and social welfare service delivery. So we have uh, four uh, professors, basically from anthropology, sociology, and social work uh, disciplines. This is a kind of a cooperative strategies between the tribe and the current indigenous study in Taiwan. And at that time, we set up our uh, cooperation, like uh, uh, people uh, want to go to the tribe to study. Uh, right now, most of the tribe they have, have only elders and children. They have some difficulty uh, facing. We try to understand their need, and then, then we try to empower them. So we have people like me from the education point of view, some people from social work, some people from tour industry, uh, we try to involve them. And we, uh, our goal is try to uh, get the local practice and can, can keep the uh, culture uh, resilience. I think that's very important, especially uh, my expertise for education, because uh, as for the cultural tra transmission uh, in the tribe, um, they usually have their own way. They, uh, family or by the tribe, but after the school uh, uh, introduced into the tribe, the, the, mo the mother or the father, they don't think they can teach their children or the, the tribal elders, uh, they uh, cannot speak Mandarin, so they think they cannot teach their children, so uh, they lose their function. And uh, they all depend on the school training, but the school uh, uh, teachers come back to us, they are not 7-Eleven, they cannot to uh, be responsible for everything after the student uh, leaves the school. So I, I think I, we, should, we should try to uh, uh, make this uh, function uh, uh, can get a resilience. And fortunately, it's still there, so we can do something right, more right now. Uh, as for the bridge role, university and the tribe are separated by different knowledge systems. I think you, you understand that. In order to transmit indigenous cultures and develop indigenous society, uh, this uh, uh, courage has to build a bridge between the university system and indigenous tradition. It's very important because they are far away for a long time. How to do it? So we have a group to discuss it. We went to Hawaii University, talked to uh, professors over there. We have uh, uh, a paper presented for the uh, indigenous education in Hawaii. Okay, now uh, introduce my own research about how, how I do it from the course design and community participation. Uh, the university and the tribe are separated by different knowledge. In order to transmit indigenous cultures and develop indigenous societies, the courage has had to build. The, I think it's, I repeat right now. Okay. Uh, it's important as the bridge. Uh, it is through the course design that to attend indigenous community activities can explore to a deeper understanding about the needs of the tribe and to design the course of activities. Get, uh, together. So uh, for the first year, we undertook field study and attended a course among the people of an indigenous tribe near the campus. Uh, the second year, we designed a surface learning class for the tribal elders and children. Current students join the, semi uh, the senior uh, care activities in the tribe or the learning services for middle high school and then an elementary school, which are located nearby. Furthermore, we have uh, brought university courses to the tribe so that students can learn the wisdom from the elders directly and attend the community activities. We also invited uh, tribal elite and experienced educators to give speech. So my research uh, method is kind of interview, participant observation, panel discussion, class attendance, and questionnaire. Uh, this is the uh, tribe I choose. It's uh, nearby my campus. Uh, driving. By driving, only take five minutes to call the people <laughs> and be me. <laughs> and my students are easy to assess. Their, this is their uh, image, the Guang Wu Shi Chi. This is uh, in Army's Kuinaha. And first of all, we need to get their permission. So uh, my group uh, interviewed uh, the head of the village, got her permission, and we explained 
the villages in the church, not in the uh, on Sunday, tell them what we are doing in Jesus' name. Then there's basically they all feel welcome, but they don't know what they can do for us. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a beginning. Uh, okay, then I talk to uh, the other uh, elite and uh, get their permissions. So after the permissions, we do uh, bring students to the uh, Rinahan tribe, so students can attend both the activities and provide service for uh, for them. And this is a uh, uh, 91 years old uh, Emmys elder. When I bring my student, uh, this is a professor from Zhongshan uh, University in China uh, to uh, attend my uh, field class. Class, and then he asked me the questions and, uh, because he think I don't have any background about the Amish tribe. So he asked me in front of my student, "Do you know the origin, uh, uh, where we are from, and do you know uh, Amish history?" Do you know? She, he gave me a lot of tests, and finally I passed it. And <laughs> and, uh, and he he think, okay, I'm qualified to ask him questions. And uh, he told me uh, in the beginning, after he uh, start to speak, he, he said, finally you are here, I'm waiting for you for a long time. I don't know why he asked me that. But uh, finally I understand why. Um, and I, I keep asking him a lot of uh, questions, but uh, he's very careful. He said, oh, I need to ask my ancestor uh, because uh, before I answer you. So I said, how can he ask his ancestor? He, he just go to a big and come back and say, okay, you can ask. <laughs> because I always keep asking very smart questions because you know, maybe, he, maybe it's a secret or it's very secret uh, wisdom. He, 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 he needs to get permission. So I, I, I just feel uh, nervous if uh, his ancestors say, no, then my student cannot learn anything. So, <laughs> and I have guests over there. Unfortunately, everything's fine. I think their answers like me. So <laughs> we, we make the... Uh, uh, everything uh, very smoothly. But when I talk about this story, I think it's important because we don't we, we don't need to think we have the right to ask them about their uh, culture, their wisdom, and they should answer us. I think it's very important. And he gave me very good lessons. Of course, I transfer to my students and other uh, scholars. And this, I am not here, that means my students will visit the elders, visit the singing group, dance group with the uh, village head and he explained everything. Because uh, half of my students are indigenous students, so they can talk to the uh, director. So we have very uh, nice gathering. They look happy, I'm not there. See, I don't need to be there. <laughs> then I come back uh, discuss with my student. And one student from mainland China, she wrote a, a very good uh, paper after the class. I feel very uh, happy. And the other student, especially this student, she said, uh, Professors, I learned from you about the knowledge, but I learned from the elders about the wisdom. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 it inspired me. That's why I have the uh, continuous uh, research. This is, I uh, invited uh, Sakilaya uh, and to uh, go to my class. After this, his lecture, one of my students uh, come to me and say thank you. I say, why? She says thank you because he, uh, he, he think it's it's kind of honor I invite uh, his uh, elder uh, to come to my class. She say thank you to me. Oh, of course, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I think what I'm doing is very, uh, very nice. I should keep on doing. This is another lecture. We saw, uh, uh, this uh, film yesterday. Yeah, really okay. okay, so uh, the tribal leaders uh, they spread out. Uh, before I provide a uh, service learning, we need to know their need. We are not just from the tribe and say, I'm providing a service, they come here, doing this, doing that. No, I think it's not right way. So we have to ask what they need us to do. And uh, I interviewed them, so they told me uh, they need. Uh, help them to do the tribal cultural transmission. Uh, they need daily care for the senior and they need to, uh, learning assistance for the children. They need professional assistance for the tribal organizations because they don't know how to type in, how to transmit the data so they can, uh, they can apply for more budget for their uh, foundations. And they, uh, they, hope, they hope we can uh, help them to develop the tool industry for the uh, Rinan because it's nearby the sightseeing places. 
for the elders, uh, indigenous knowledge uh, should be applied to social service for elders in Taiwan. Uh, elders are <coughs> barriers of their existence. And, but the situation is, unfortunately, outsiders usually use their own way and outside resources to serve the need of the elders. So and, uh, I took a uh, few words here and found something new. Um, some elders, they reject join the regular social work service because they feel they are uncomfortable. They are usually treated as a dependent person and lose their dignity. So they prefer to uh, talk uh, uh, in the tree, I mean, not in tree, uh, under the tree, and uh, they can uh, have their own social activities. They don't, they don't want to go to the, the, the service because they think they are treated as a, a tree. They are not. They should get more respect. So I have some questions. What are the gaps between the traditional and the new service for the elders, and how can we bridge this? So, uh, of course, I have to learn from them. So we observe uh, funding social service uh, regularly, and I interview the elders. Then we compare and the funded activities with the traditional roles which the elders usually participate in. So this is the 90 years of the person he talking about. 市长, for me it's a very precious data. This, this uh, elder is doing some uh, tours for children, toys for children to play. We have a lot of talk. This um, very old lady, this baby is here, talk to me. She can make a very good traditional custom, even the uh, Japanese people and uh, Seneca America people uh, bought uh, her work. And he, I asked her why she designed that way. She said, I thought for a long time, I think it's pretty, so I do it. Then, then she cannot explain more, but I know she's the original creator. <laughs> okay, then I have a good interview with the, the, the helper and the volunteer over there and see how we can do together. And I interview the people who she's doing some so the needs. So um, I have some observation, like uh, I went to the funded service place, I uh, exploring the age daycare center, and uh, uh, when the tribe has some activities, have harvest festival, fishing festival, and family uh, rituals, they invite me, of course I come, they, and they try to construct the supporting model. This is the, uh, the schedule before their uh, daily care activities. The elders people, they uh, use the wine to uh, worship, uh, tell their uh, uh, ancestors we are doing something or they can bless us. I think it's not what we, uh, Han people think about daycare center, people just go there. They think it's spiritual, it's, uh, it's not daily life, uh, not only daily life uh, activities. If you look at the anthropology, watch what they are doing. See all, all the older lady they are doing some basic uh, hand walking, and the, the volunteer told me they need to move their hands to okay, keep their walking. But at, after that, I, I think we, we can do something more for these older people. Mm, I, you saw the, this uh, summer festival yesterday. Why I showed uh, this to you because it's uh, heavy rain and people still keep on dance the whole day. The, they have their great uh, ground there, but the, in the afternoon they take it off, keep on their walking there, very enthusiastic. This is also interesting because I interviewed uh, the, the head over there, he told me he want to uh, do this for their uh, People. At that time, right now, this they need, they need to make the head for the first time. Uh, why at the Mother's Day? Uh, after I interviewed more person, I finally I know why. Because uh, after the uh, historical event, they, they are uh, run off from their tribe. They uh, cannot bring their document uh, or their uh, daily things. Uh, because they have to run away in the midnight, so they cannot bring those beautiful things. So they, they, they held the field, they need this again, because they think when they put this on, they look very nice. Okay, this is a fishing festival. Best, the head, they are political person because they would like to count. So they can get some political support. Okay. This is the family ceremony. Okay, now I'm talking about the service learning for my classes. Uh, 
there are uh, three places. One is uh, elementary school, the other is in the senior high school, then the other one is uh, in the elder caring services. Uh, we pray together because I emphasize I'm not doing it, do everything for them. They have to pray with us, we need to know their needs. So we need to fit their needs. And then, uh, I give my students choices. Uh, they can choose uh, so many choices. But unfortunately, most of the, my students choose to help children, not elders. So only very few <laughs> students go there. But uh, anyway, it's still a function. But uh, I think they need more design. For the group uh, service project, uh, I think it's very creative because um, my students, they are also very creative. Uh, I tell you later what they have done. <laughs> really surprising. And uh, uh, then after that, we, I, we have class report. We, thinking what we are doing. So first of all, I talk to the principal and their major director what they need us to do. And they are very serious. They ask their uh, teachers what we can do for them. They do questionnaire. <laughs> and uh, then I ask my students choose. Most of them choose to go to the school. So you see we have four uh, university students, five children. That's a very large service. <laughs> And this student asked me, because I, I say you can arrange the uh, course design, I, I don't have any limitation. He said, I want to do some scientific experiment for students. Oh, good, 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 because it's never happened in my mind because my students think it's good. So they prepare their own goods. Um, I, I say you can, I, I can pay later, but I think they don't really care. Anyway, the students, they are taking care of these things doing as well. They play the ball with the children. They cut the grasses for, for this university, this school. And after that, we have class report. And uh, the, 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 the student, when he or she reported, people, the other students didn't go this place to any her because they can eat uh, army's food. Usually, it's, it, we cannot get it uh, outside. So, uh, we have it. And also, they give us, give me many uh, good suggestions that like, uh, I should take the service into the college level, not only for the class level. <coughs> Choose that if they need the help from the uh, uh, sport uh, uh, department, maybe we should come and connect with them. Maybe we can provide more service. I wrote paper about that. Then I contact with the professors over there, but they are not really interested, so it's not function yet. But I think it's good design. And then this is for the uh, middle high school the principal and the director, what they need. And I think it's a good communication because in the beginning they say they are recruiting the students. They don't have good grade. So I said, don't say that before recruit students. I just, some people, they, write to, they like to improve their uh, uh, academic achievement. Don't say, because you are bad, so you are chosen. So we assist you. It's not the right way to say that. So we have some communication before that. And uh, my students surprised me because they contact with the school by themselves. I saw this picture later. <laughs> and the, the, the principal even showed that welcome to our group to visit our uh, provide service. I'm not there, so I don't really know what's going on. But they did it by themselves and they report to me. It's like, wow, my goodness. And they are really uh, helpful because uh, they think that, uh, that those students, they are not to. Uh, really bad students because they don't get good uh, academic achievement. So uh, one of the students say, uh, 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 her, her students say, if you give me shoes, then I can uh, remember uh, 20 English words next time. He, he's, she, he's, he was a yeah, very nervous. He said, what's the quick part time sugar? Maybe she cannot afford it. But then the students say, it's not so expensive. And she prepared that uh, shoes for them. For the uh, students. The students have very many words, even half of the book. I don't know why they name it. Other students, other uh, middle school students, they say, Oh, I, I, I like to get the candies too. So <laughs> she prepared a lot of candies, and the students they learn uh, uh, a lot of English words uh, after uh, she finished the help. <laughs> I think. It, those students, they need uh, uh, university students to uh, 
grow with them, not really teach them. They, they, grow, they care about their, uh, their learning. Uh, that, that's very, very helpful. And the, one of my students said, uh, because he thought uh, those students cannot go, get into college, so maybe um, I should ask them what they are. Uh, Go, what they want to become. And when people say, I want to become uh, some kind of professional uh, work, and he, he asked the student, Do you know what requirement it is? He said, No. Then my students should uh, find the information for him. So before you get into this project, you need to pass that course exam, you need to do some prepare, and uh, that the student can help to have uh, his own career plan. So, a university student can do a lot of things compared if they only sing and dance in college, they can do more things outside. And they're also happy for doing that. And they, they, they complain to me because the, 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 the schedule is too short and they don't have the time to say goodbye to their students. So I give them special time they can uh, uh, not show up in my class, but go, go to the school, say goodbye to the students. Yeah, I think it's, they, they also uh, inspire me how to do things. And I still that very nice. Okay, this is for the se uh, senior uh, citizens. They have birthday celebration, they pick in beans because they try to make their finger can work. And this is the chicken they have in their garden. They have vegetables they put it in the early morning. And they still have some young people, like 60 years old, that they take time to cook it. And uh, this is also amazing because usually we have uh, this funded service, we usually order the open door, it's a lunch box, and we need to order and take out the money to bring it. But they can serve their own and we get better food. <laughs> yeah. So we should not think they are relying on person. They can solve many questions, uh, they can help themselves very well. Oh, then I ask the question do you think about this service? My student basically, uh, those are good. These two, because they are uh, opposite, uh, opposite uh, questions. Uh, I show you. I am not interested in local culture. It's useless. It's <laughs> the other things are good. I can make friends, I can find a way. I, and it's good for my responsibility, good for participants or public affairs. Okay. All activities are evaluated by students. The results shows that students do appreciate uh, this arrangement and expect to learn more. And uh, 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 then I have the uh, tribe presentation. <laughs> I talk to elders uh, before the presentation. There, it's in the night. This lady even wear uh, pajamas to come, and she has to go home by herself in the in the uh, late night, so I do really worry about her, but she do her own things. And because they they want to show up and uh, they're happy, we can get together again. This time, get more people, uh, but unfortunately, most of them are elder people. Okay, and uh, the village head uh, they, they say, because we are, uh, we think the culture is very important, so they think they should uh, learn more about the traditional songs. They can as well, they encourage their people. We should do more because right now, professors they are studying us. Uh, so I think we give a uh, positive uh, uh, feedback from them. Okay, this uh, this uh, woman right now become representative for the county. So it's, she she's no more the head of the village become more important, and she also show up and encourage people. So my family is like uh, usually for the service we have KTV singing, but uh, it's not better than traditional gathering. They can sing together, dance together. They, they, for the KTV, they just look at the monitor and sing the songs. <laughs> for these elder people, it's really too sad because they can do much better. Okay, they prefer to eat, dance, and sing with their friends together, not just KTV. <laughs> okay, and for them, getting together is. Because all the people they are their acquaintance for more than fifty years. So even they are alone in their house, but they have their sisters, brothers around their house. So they feel uh, very comfortable. Even they cannot move uh, uh, smoothly, but uh, uh, they try to go to that uh, service uh, uh, regularly because they think getting together is very important. 
Okay, we, we have some activities like folding papers, and, and I think it's not necessary because uh, they can fold in leaves for their dishes. Oh, they can do much more things, and they can make traditional clothes. They can do a lot of things. Why do you think they can only folding paper? They can work together to make the traditional hats and clothes for the traditional festivals. And uh, they can teach the youth about their own languages and tribal history, which has not been read. And college students can learn a lot from service learning activities, including accompanying the elders in the tribe and the youth in school. Because my students say, uh, that even the elder people, they compete with each other, so they are very serious about all the activities. So uh, sometimes they uh, get uh, unhappy, and my students don't know how to help them. So they think, how to accompany the elders? We need wisdom. Okay, traditionally, the elders own wisdom and enjoy the respect. The same age groups have very strong interpersonal connection and they can exchange values with each other. So they perform mutual respect to their, their spirits before each social activities. This study has begun a process of build long-term relationship. We have found that not only tribe peoples, but also students should be included, with mutual interest and joint friend creating a good working environment for both the university and the tribe. So I have some suggestions that we need to design social services for the elders that are fit for their own need. Social workers should learn indigenous knowledge and use the tribal existing resources to serve the elders in the tribe. The elders need to be so, uh, not to be so passive in waiting for social services, they can be more active in solving tribal problems by teaching indigenous knowledge. The elders in the tribe are living uh, treasures, so we need to record their life stories and learn from their indigenous <coughs> and as soon as possible. So I'm response to uh, uh, La Belle and World uh, the question in uh, 1996. How do college and universities best prepare students for common citizenship in a diverse, democratic state while also uh, neutral group cultural values and institutional participation? So we need in-depth knowledge about the tribe and build supportive and open communication in between. Teachers and students become culturally responsive during the process of action study. The tribe gets the power of resilience from the communication process. So we need to run together and at that time have a dream I do something good for this tribe and we can connect together, we can do more tribe and then we can have a better future at home. <laughs> this is me with the other people, but this is also me when I'm 18 years old. Look at the, the houses, this never happened again because it disappeared. So young at the time, I ran up this way. But I think I'm, I'm is that, uh, I, I don't think I'm really totally behind people because they influence me, so my personality is kind of nice. We're, we have ample time for questions and, uh, and discussion now. And um, I just, uh, one thing that I was thinking of during your talk was that what is the function of a university in different societies? The function of a university like SOAS in a place like London is clearly very different than the, you know, the functions of the university as you were describing. And that made me think that um, surely the various tribes represent many different types of societies. Um, some of them are huge, you mentioned the Amis with 200,000 people. There are others that are significantly smaller, a few hundred people. Um, and I wonder if the um, if, if you could talk about what would be the different function of a university in these different tribal contexts, I imagine that the, uh, the role that a university does or could play, or the role that um, uh, indigenous students with elite education could play in a very tiny population uh, is, is quite different, I would imagine, than um, what the roles of a university in a population of 200,000 people that um, have a much more diverse, perhaps, demographics and um, you know, different cultures. So basically, my question is, um, you, you often refer to the tribe and what the university is trying to do. 
do different tribes have different needs for different types of university engagement? And if you could talk about that. OK. Um, the first question is, uh, is why my Nichimotoma uh, University uh, chosen uh, to set up the indigenous college uh, years ago? <laughs> anyway, uh, because at that time uh, we are chosen, chosen because uh, we are nearby the uh, tribe. And Huali, we are the second indigenous So, uh, of course, the, the, the tribal people are looking forward if this they give them some credit <laughs> for, the, for their political person. So we got some support for that. And for academic reason that I uh, told you because it seems I was young I started doing research in Hawaii. <laughs> At that time I don't know how to do this business data. And because of this uh, a very important place to do field work for better parishes So um, as a, a university, we are trying to connect with the local communities. Uh, kind of uh, government uh, uh, goal, they try to give us some financial support, encourage us to do that. And uh, in my university, not in my college doing anything. The other college, we are connected with the Hata community group. I think the university is not only the places we are uh, teaching foreign, foreign cultures, uh, also we think we should connect with our local cultures and also we can provide some um, service for them. So that's why I designed my uh, service learning class. And we, I don't want to go to the field for and get things from the local people. I want to get feedback. But the feedback is not at all. You, I need to pen through the wall. I pen for you, but after you pen, it's not going on. <laughs> you know, so I asked it what we need in uh, design. And when I did that, uh, uh, this community thing, so I, I gave them the talent and opportunity to think about what they can do together. Then uh, after uh, I finished my uh, uh, report, I uh, tried to uh, communicate with them what our um, research funding so they can I can get encouragement and also they can tell me their need. That's why I still uh, need, need to do more things uh, if I can get from the past the next few years. <laughs> I'm still working on it. So it's a like long term relationship. I think people need to trust you at this. And at that time after they trust you things get more easy. Yeah, and uh, because uh, our university is located there, so I always tell the travel people, I will not uh, disappear, you can always find me, so <laughs> I'm responsible for what I'm doing. Not like uh, uh, some um, scholars there from the outside, uh, they can disappear after they have But we will not, uh, we, are, we will always be there, so we have benefit. So as for your second question, like the other university, uh, if they are connected with different tribe people, they can do different things. Like we have uh, Jinan University, uh, they have uh, some of our professors, my friend, she's doing something there. Uh, they are dealing with different tribal people, and uh, she uh, uh, used the student's organization to do a lot of tribal services. So we all uh, make each uh, uh, other uh, indigenous courage because basically they are uh, serving the tribe uh, nearby the Kaohsiung area. And they have private group, uh, tribe uh, group, group. So they have different design. Uh, as for my courage, because our students basically are from uh, 16 or 14 uh, tribe, so we can provide things. But uh, as what you say, uh, if it's there are very small uh, tribe like uh, um, Dabu or uh, Sao, uh, usually uh, it's very difficult to hire the ethnic teacher to teach them uh, their own languages. So 
uh, until now we cannot set up the uh, ethnic language classes for those students I feel very sorry for that but because we have some limitation like if you open a class you need to have the student at least maybe 10 or, but we cannot find 10 people <laughs> from the small group so uh, that's why we try to get more support from the council of uh, indigenous peoples maybe they can get, get a special fund they already found us but uh, we can only open the language courses for the big group uh, I think it's our weakness yeah thank you thank you um, you can keep your microphone on. Question is open up to the floor. Uh, could anyone like to raise a point or a view? View. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fair enough. Um, Professor Wolf, thank you so much for um, two days talk uh, because we can see clearly what you are doing in, in Huanian area and, and for armies, not for armies, about armies and especially their education. So I have uh, uh, two questions relating to what you said today. Uh, the first one is um, a small one. I, I noticed um, quite a lot of the, the, the visual you show uh, women are doing some sort of uh, ex old ladies are doing some exercises uh, regarding their hands. They are only men. Uh, sorry, they are only women. Men were usually uh, still busy with rituals, so it's quite a very clear um, gender division there. So could you talk a little bit about this? Mm -hmm. Another thing is, um, I notice is your focus this talk on social work services. Uh, at first I thought, like, what's that? I, I realized that now you mainly meant, if I'm right, uh, you mainly meant uh, the services provided to the elderly, something like that. So what's the difference for indigenous elderly to those offered to the uh, Han people, for example? Another thing, uh, because when you're talking about certain things, seemingly actually it's commonly felt by elderly people being treated like children or, uh, you know, idiots. So, so I think there must be some sort of difference specifically offered for the uh, indigenous elderly that are different from the uh, Han people or well, whichever group. So that also leads to the, another thing is um, what are the answers for your research are the, to better the social services for them? Thank you. Uh, for the first question, I think uh, picking beans or folding papers is not only uh, for women because uh, maybe the picture you only see the women, the other side they are men, but uh, most of them are women. Maybe women did longer, but I haven't done <laughs> the statistics there over there. And, uh, but they do have a gender division. Just like I told you, I cannot uh, join some uh, activities, so I have to uh, hire my assistant to do that. And in the beginning, they said, Oh, because you are professors, of course you are welcome. But I said, No, no, uh, since it's uh, forbidden, it's <laughs> I had better don't break it. So I said, Oh, okay, don't break your rule because of me. So. I have my assistant to do that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, I asked the chief why, but he cannot answer me. He said my parents tell me so. <laughs> I have to find. I have to answer. I have to answer that by myself after I have done enough research. <laughs> take time. Okay. For the second questions, uh, uh, is there any difference if they are uh, like a Hakka elder people that may have different social service. I think for the uh, social workers, the friendly design the activities for the elders, they may have some their uh, basic guideline. They they think it's good uh, for the elder people, but uh, the ethnic difference is important. So that's why I uh, I find out that it's not really daily uh, life activities. They uh, also it's, uh, belong to the spiritual world because uh, for the indigenous knowledge, it's an, we cannot uh, uh, disconnect their connection with spiritual world, but. Uh, you know, because for them they are together. 
but maybe for our knowledge system, we think a secret, a secret, that they are different, the school life is different from family life, but maybe they are integrated. So everything they thought about their ancestors, like the chief, uh, before um, their activities, he told me, he always uh, pray uh, with uh, the wine to the, the, the uh, ancestor as everything goes better. I think maybe what uh, is a coincidence, but every time they are going to have important uh, events. I notice in, if they have the, uh, like last time they have the fishing festival uh, in the afternoon, in the morning still heavy raining. I feel very uh, sorry for that, but uh, afternoon. The, the sun come out, <laughs> sun rises, then they can have everything ha happy. And that, uh, last time they have the bird catching festival. Yeah, the, they went after we finish. Then the <laughs> I don't know that the chief told me he prayed in the very early morning go, and he because he thinks that his responsibility to have to connect with the spirit. That, that's why I think we should not transmit our knowledge and uh, without the spirit uh, domain because it's, it's we should not to disconnect them from uh, indigenous activities. That's why when I ask that question, I have to ask my ancestor if they say yes, then I can answer. I I do respect that thing because um, yeah, it's different. Yeah. Uh, do I answer everything? Oh, for the different group, uh, I really I don't need to do any comparison. That but by coincidence, I watch one uh, Haga uh, social service uh, in the uh, community center. I noticed the first is the location, they did much better. <laughs> and I asked the people why, because they said well, we have some mayor he, he used to uh, set up that uh, place, so it's, it's better. So I mean, they are doing some physical training, I think they have a, a better coach to do that. <laughs> but I don't really uh, do the comparison yet. But, uh, but I think the indigenous elders, they need their own way, because if you use the uh, uh, Haka's way or the uh, uh, Tan's way, they don't really feel happy. That they think that if they can get a uh, gossip under the tree, they are very happy. <laughs> and because they criticize some people walk, walk by, they become uh, um, very, uh, they have their social justice functions <laughs> for the other people. They, we ignore that because we think social services, they go to there and do some physical eat and they're going home, they keep you healthy. But since it's not what you, they want for all, they still have some uh, other need, like spiritual need, or uh, their older friend connection, they connect to the land. And unfortunately, I, I noticed some people, they don't really understand that. So they provide service for that community. I remember, that's my assistant who meet, uh, they go to that uh, community center gathering all the elder people like I did, but uh, they talk to them in Taiwanese because they don't know they are army's people. I mean, of course, the, the, the elders, and, uh, most of them understand Taiwanese. Then they uh, tell them, uh, this is kind of for uh, outside uh, grasses, we have to cut it. So they teach them, uh, uh, recognize that this uh, tree, this plant is not good, it's dangerous. Please cut it. Then they bring it to the garden and cut together. Oh, when I heard that, I just feel too bad because Nobody can know that uh, plants better than these elders because even they are 18, 19 years old, they still doing their garden work every day. Of course they know what is foreign plants. <laughs> and some of them, they cannot bend themselves, then they ask them to do that practice. Uh, I think it's torture. And my student told me, then they come back to the center, they give the questionnaire, ask them to feel out. <laughs> And my students said, just one person said, I feel out first, and then everybody follow it. Then, what's the value of this question? <laughs> so that's why I think other disciplines, they need to not learn indigenous culture before they provide what they say, education for them. Thank you. Uh, next question. Okay. Um, I had a couple of long-term questions. Um, um, in, in Taiwan studies, we often talk about how strong the field is. Is the field growing or is it in decline? Um, so we, you've been involved in indigenous studies in Taiwan for well over 20 yeah, years. Uh, 
um, how would you evaluate the, the kind of the, uh, the state of the field, the, the mood of the field? Is it growing or is it uh, in, in a kind of crisis? Uh, you talked about a couple of other places that do indigenous studies. You mentioned Iso last year mm -hmm. and Tina last year. Um, how, how, do, how does their development compare to yours in, in Dorkwa? So that was one question about the, the mood of the field. And the other issue I was curious about is that you're, you said you're encouraging your graduates to go kind of stay in the tribes mm -hmm. rather than go into the big cities as their kind of career um, goal. After 20 years, how successful have you been in doing that? Uh, the first one for the population growth, what, which kind of population? You no, know? I mean, uh, the uh, uh, indigenous study, in terms of, uh, is it growing? Oh, uh, of course, it's growing rapidly. I started to do the indigenous education 25 years ago. At that time, I tried to do the uh, literature review, I check all the library records. There's no this kind of classification. It's a list under the special education. Only a few books. So at that time, it's very easy for me to do literature review. I finish it quickly. And uh, then right now, if you open the computer, type the, uh, uh, the keywords, many of them. And in the beginning, only a few uh, from the in, uh, enterprise department. But right now, all the uh, disciplines, they can join many and we have a lot of them. I, I cannot tell you how, how many because I need to end, uh, check it later, but it's totally different. But it's become a very important item for the librarian to recognize indigenous education. Okay? So you see the differences. And what's the second the question? About, uh, <laughs> do uh, your graduates really uh -huh. uh, stay in the tribe okay. after they graduate? Okay, uh, graduation, we, we have to uh, divide it as a college graduate or uh, graduate student's graduate. <laughs> but most of my graduate students, they are uh, current uh, indigenous uh, schools teacher. So they come back, they can use their knowledge and skill to help that. So for me, my, student, my graduate student never have the problem to find a job because they are already in, in a good position. They know what they are doing, they, they can do better. Uh, I think that's important. For the uh, un, uh, undergrad, undergraduate, uh, because we have some um, special uh, tests, if they pass, they can become, I think Ari is here, he can explain more. Uh, they can become an administrative person uh, for working for the government. And right now, I, I when I go to the uh, Council of Indigenous uh, Peoples, when I walk into the hall, everybody say, hi, professors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are my students. I feel very happy. So, yeah, 20 years, you know, so many things, so many uh, people grow and uh, they get good position. Yeah. So, but uh, uh, we still, uh, well, some of them become our uh, faculty members. Mm -hmm. Two of my students become faculty members so in the same university. So I see the result, but uh, if you want to know the uh, statistics, I need to check later. <laughs> yeah. uh, other questions or comments? Uh, Roy and then Suzanne. Um, thank you for the talk, and um, I'm just curious about how, do, uh, how does the long-term uh, care insurance in Taiwan function in this uh, like bridge and the social social works for the elderly? Well, we're not saying students because they are still young, but I mean, yeah, they are old, older people, and how does it work in this cooperation? Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Yeah, just like my student told me, they have difficulty because they don't really understand the elders' need, and, and especially if they are from Han, Han group, they don't understand any people. But uh, uh, for the elder people, they really appreciate that the young people come. The, we need a new blood <laughs> for the for them. They feel happy. They, they can feel they are young, so they are uh, very uh, serious to treat whatever we. Uh, invite them to do together. 
So, uh, but my students need to increase their uh, skills. That's what they told me. But uh, the next year, I have uh, the other service learning uh, classes. Uh, uh, one of my students, uh, she's from Ami's uh, tribe, and she chose to uh, serve for the elders. And it's much easier because she can speak any language. <laughs> and all the elders people just feel she's like the daughter. And uh, she know how to lead these elders to do like the physical activities and uh, how to lead them to sing together, dance together. And after that I asked her why. She said, Oh, I always do this in the church. She already know how to do this. And uh, I asked her why you choose this. She said, Oh, I just use the, the way I serve my grandfather or grandmother. So it's much easier uh, if the students are yeah, indigenous people. That's why I emphasize that part. Mm. Is that your question? Hello. Um, good morning, and thank you so much for your presentation. I've been thinking a lot about um, indigenous um, education in the United States, and one of the things one of the things that comes up a lot is about colonialism and decolonizing. And I haven't heard much um, discussion here about your program, but it's something that we, we use as phrase such as, such as the settler uh, groups and what, what needs to happen. Um, and I don't know if this is a discussion in Taiwan or not, but in the United States, you know, there's very strong within the university saying, we need to decolonize, and what are the economic, what are the land consequences, what are the consequences for um, in the indigenous peoples? And I'm just sort of wondering how you have that conversation um, in Taiwan. Thank you. Yeah, actually my uh, university provides many courses about decolonization. So I like gender issues, uh, it's very uh, fam uh, we have a lot of these courses provided there. And uh, for my research, uh, I'm writing a new project right now, I have to turn it in before, before this month. So I do use the decolonization. Uh, I use the Americans' uh, research funding, they think it's uh, very important. So I use the uh, new way, culture, sustaining, revitalization, pedagogy, to do what uh, uh, I can do next for next project. Yeah, I think it's important. But uh, uh, right now we only have finished that like, cultural with cultural responsive teaching. But I think it's enough. We have to move beyond it. So for my next project, hopefully it will pass. I will do more about this. Thank you. Following to the previous question about the um, housing care, and because as I know, a lot of indigenous indigenous people in Taiwan choose to be nurses. So I want to understand how your um, program can be involved more uh, indigenous people who have a more nursing certificate or background to service their own community. Yeah, yesterday I show a picture, I interviewed the Chiji Keji Da Xue, they are training indigenous nurses, it's the uh, most important places over there, they, because the Chiji Foundation providing scholarships and providing the uh, job because they have their own hospital. So they are recruiting a lot of in indigenous girls there, they are get training to become good nurse. And the, the, the uh, director told me they are teaching, that they are making a, a dictionary so they can use uh, armies, uh, all, all kinds of ethnic languages about the uh, medical words so can, they can use and apply to the elders so we can shorten the gap between the hospital and the tribal people. Uh, additional questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I forgot to say, uh, you know, all our work over the two decades of uh, time, uh, dedication to the indigenous community is really amazing. Um, uh, I got another question, if, if I may, if I can find it. <laughs> Um, okay, you, you mentioned one, one particular, uh, you, in passing, there's a, one Chinese student wrote uh, an essay about the, the visit and actually published it. 
So I want the, uh, no? No published, just oh, a paper. Uh, a good paper. No, so I, my question is, I suppose you have some uh, Chinese exchange students. What are their views on the Taiwanese indigenous policy and your dedication in the community? So, you know, what's their idea about Taiwanese indigenous people? Okay, I think I can use the Zhongshan University that uh, Professor Shen Zhouxia because she is in the picture with, she's with us uh, in, uh, when I'm doing the classes. Uh, because after she was with, uh, with me a whole day, I asked my assistant to interview because interview her because I cannot interview her, it's too embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, she said a lot of good things about what I'm doing. She thinks as an anthropologist in, in mainland China, maybe they didn't do so much things. So when I visit uh, uh, mainland China, he, she introduced me to other professors say what I'm doing. They all think it's very interesting and inspiring, they hope they can do the same thing. And uh, she thought the, uh, uh, the the elder people really have a lot of words, they need to talk to the young people. Just like the, the people say, I'm waiting for you, waiting for you for a long time while you are here now, <laughs> after I pass his exam. Anyway, uh, so uh, uh, I think I, they, I got encouragement, but I don't know what uh, will they do the same thing or not. But at least uh, like a PhD student, I said yesterday, she told me she's from the Zhang group. She said she already know which Zhang people she would uh, invite to go to her classes. So I think we are, uh, what we are doing, maybe we think it's not a strange, it's not an inspiring, it's just very common, but maybe for mainland Chinese people, they think, wow, then they can do it. So I think if uh, we can influence them, then it's good for the uh, minority education. Uh, of course, I would like to uh, uh, exchange my ideas with them more. I'm a student from another field. I'm studying art history, but I also took courses about anthropology and study about the indigenous uh, tribes um, from my undergraduate and until now for my thesis. Um, speaking about the colonizing and decolonization, um, this is what the topic I'm, stu I'm studying about because for museums right now, they are collecting objects that is um, greatly that was collected during the colonizing era. So that makes me really interesting about the study about indigenous, how the tribes, they take uh, those objects. What is their view if the objects taken back to the tribe because they're mostly taken by the Japanese um, archeologists or the archeologists that is during that time, they kind of thinking to rescue all the objects um, and exchanging all the kind of um, like foods, clothes um, during that era. So I was really interesting about like, what is your view as a, a, a part of this tribe and how do you take this like, uh, how about like the other people, how they think about those objects if they can come back to the tribe and educate more to the children. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the indigenous young people right now, if they get inspired about uh, uh, decolonization or uh, their indigenous subjectivities, uh, they can uh, create a lot of new way to prove it. Uh, and like uh, Sifu I just mentioned yes, uh, yesterday, he opened a uh, summer school for the people they want to learn Amis culture. And he emphasized uh, we should learn it by seasons, not by uh, academic years. <laughs> so because back home, the harvest festival always happened in the summertime. Oh, how, I hope my student can join, but uh, nobody in the school <laughs> in the summertime. So I can never do it. So uh, the, like he has that kind of school, and uh, it's really uh, just follow the, the original season uh, activities. That we can get their real spirit. Not right now. Usually, harvest festival should not happen in the summer. It should be in autumn. 
<laughs> so, but right now because of the tourist, <laughs> because of our summer vacation, so we moved to that town. Maybe and so we cannot go back to the original design. But, but he tried to come back everything to the original faces and uh, fit for what the modern people need. And I think he will do that good job. I saw that her uh, his idea from the radio. <laughs> I said, oh, what he's doing is what I want to do. So I already do it. <laughs> so that's why I like education. Once you inspire students, they can do much better than you without. Um, I had a um, uh, comparative question. I was, I was um, this is kind of linking to my, my earlier question about. Uh, uh, I was trying to think what was the comparative field to Indigenous studies in, in Taiwan. I was thinking maybe maybe hacker studies. So I mean, in your view, how does the development of Indigenous studies in Taiwan compare with uh, hacker studies? So, um, has, the, has the field developed in a similar way or a different different way? Um, has indigenous studies looked at different disciplines uh, to in greater depth than, for example, uh, Hakka studies? Okay. As for the uh, Hakka studies, um, we have uh, many Hakka college in the university right now. I remember at that time they set up their program, they invited me to become the chairperson for them <laughs> because they think I can do the same thing. Since I'm not indigenous people, of course I can do things for Hakka studies. But I reject because I think uh, indigenous people need me more. That's what I think. Maybe they don't really need me. <laughs> anyway, uh, and uh, at that time, I think Hakka people they have more uh, resources. Yeah, that's totally different because uh, indigenous people for us they are kind of uh, really minority people. They don't have so many we call it uh, cultural ca uh, capital. So, but Hakka people they are maybe well educated. A lot of big industries bosses they are Hakka people. So they easy to get money. They they can know how to do things quickly. So if we, I don't really do the comparison, but if we compare the TV program, uh, we have Hakka. Uh, channel and uh, it is channel compared that you can see they're very different they they have they grow rapidly and uh, they because we have global happiness so they have global happiness studies and they have combined all the uh, international resources it's totally different from indigenous studies so uh, that's why I, I prefer to stay in indigenous uh, area thank you one of the things that struck me is at least in terms of international tower studies Indigenous studies seem to be. It's awesome. um, so, in terms of international Taiwan studies, it seems that uh, indigenous topics are much more visible mm -hmm. than hacker studies. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that you suggested that hacker studies have much more resources, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not sure why that is. I don't know whether any colleagues wanted to comment on that. Yeah, well, we have to divide it in, in, if you think about the research result or the books or document or activities. Yeah, and uh, uh, I think for the uh, studies, because they have, I think, at least three Hakka colleges, so they encourage the professors to do research and they got budget. So, Kampel at that time had only one college. Of, so, I just uh, think maybe they get better, but I, I, I need to do more study before I answer this. I just get my impression that they get more resources than we have. Your research. Uh, do you have, do you think what is the most important factor to uh, sustain the uh, indigenous cultural identity in higher education? And compared with your research, uh, do you uh, can you provide some other research researcher also uh, focus on the same uh, research issue but provide different strategy with that? Okay. Uh, for the uh, cultural identity. Uh, I think um, um, most of my students, if they uh, get identity, and they will get better performance. But right now, I don't really have the uh, 
uh, statistic data can support that. And but uh, we have some literature review from uh, some indigenous PhD students. They uh, they wrote papers. Uh, they have conclusion uh, about uh, the high school indigenous students, and uh, they 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 have some research. They show that. If they got inspired by uh, indigenous identity, they get better performance. But for the uh, great, uh, undergraduate student, level, I haven't done the statistical quant uh, quantitative studies. Maybe next time I should do something. But uh, for anthropologists, I just indulge in the qualitative studies. I enjoy the connection with the uh, uh, tribal peoples. Maybe, uh, maybe before I design the questionnaire, it's better uh, than I just uh, right now. Uh, show up the, the achievement. Maybe it's uh, still for outside their point of view to design the questionnaire. I don't like that, so I think I need time to uh, design better a way to find out uh, the uh, relationships. Uh, I thought I'd pop in with a question myself now. Um, and it comes out sort of uh, my thinking about the long tortured history of anthropologists with um, indigenous informants. And I'm wondering, in some of the videos you showed, there, there seem to be moments of um, performance of indigeneity rather than some sort of organic um, indigeneity. And there is perhaps no distinction there anyway, but I'm wondering if in your studies or your students' approaches, for example, Two things. I noticed in one of the pictures of the teenage boys dancing mm -hmm. that our eyes focus naturally on the, um, the outfits that they are wearing, which presumably symbolize something which I don't know. But I also couldn't help note, and I imagine that in your university what you talk about are the outfits and, uh, and what's communicated by them and, and the rituals and so forth, but I, I couldn't help noticing the, um, that they are all wearing um, sneakers made by different famous corporate brands. Um, there was a, the back row was a row of Nikes, and then the front row was, was uh, mostly Adidas with um, a New Balance thrown in and some Nikes. And can you one person was barefoot? Oh, one person was barefoot. I did not notice that. Right. Interesting. Um, which left me perhaps incorrectly with the impression that. The, the local teenager said, okay, it's 10 o'clock, now we are going to do, put on our, you know, our indigenous uniforms and perform for all the people there taking pictures of them, for example. Um, and then afterwards we were going to go like play football in our Adidas uh, <laughs> and, and, and Nikes. Um, even if that were the case, I wouldn't denigrate that in any way, right? It doesn't make them less or indigenous or what have you, but my sense would be that this sort of ironic distance or whatever, I, I, I don't get the sense that this sort of discussion happens in your teachings. And the other moment that occurred to me was the elder who said that um, he can't answer your question until he consults with the, uh, his ancestors. And he goes into the back room and then he comes out and he says, the ancestors said, you know, okay, go ahead. So it occurs to me, maybe I'm overly cynical here, maybe he was consulting with his ancestors, right? In all sincerity and interacting with you in all sincerity. Or maybe he was performing in front of you, the local anthropologist to whom he can gain something from in different ways, right? Um, and having performed that, now he's, and, and, and again, if, if that possibility is at least there, and I wouldn't knock him for doing it, but the potential for um, irony, right? The, 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 the potential for you go there in all sincerity, uh, where your students do, and learn what is presented to you, right? And then, and then that's what the education consists of. I'm just wondering, does the possibility of um, manipulation by informants, the possibility of um, set performance pieces, you know, um, in, in what are, no matter 
no matter what, um, indigenous dancing did not take place historically, right? With a white car sort of navigating around them right behind. And, and so that just, but I'm not, I don't get the sense that this kind of dynamic is presented as indigenous education. So that's sort of my constellation of questions. When you mentioned about that uh, uh, elder people just go back and try to consult with the ancestors through what he doing, we have a famous anthropology story that's happened to the American indigenous people. When the anthropologists go into their uh, upper home, ask them questions, they say, oh wait, I have to ask some people. Then, then the, 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 they go to back door. And the people are waiting, they think it must be uh, the other elder people inside. And then he come out and say, oh, the answer is the rule. And then finally, he, the, the anthropologist think, I need to know who is behind that. And finds the anthropology book. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrote, written down by anthropology. That's why I feel very uh, 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 dangerous because uh, maybe the anthropology, like uh, Japanese anthropologists or Han uh, anthropologists, they uh, record something, but it's not really true <laughs> because, like Japanese scholars, they may get some data because during the colonial uh, period of time, it's easier for them. Of course, they take some time and effort to get the, the data. But I heard some indigenous people. People say, oh, these people come ask us a lot of questions, so we all prepare the same answer. So they will not ask more. So I really doubt that what they record about. It. So if we, if they are consulting with anthropologist book, this in danger. But uh, it's really happened because my Japanese scholar, she needs some, uh, and she did her, her PhD dissertation about Gamaran languages, and she told me uh, because her uh, book has been translated into Chinese. So some people ask the uh, uh, Gavaran people about their history. No, oh, wait, I have to ask them to <laughs> talk and answer. Well, well, well. <laughs> so that's why we need uh, deep, uh, long-term research. Then we can find the, the real story. Yeah. But don't authorize by anthropologists because they may be wrong. <laughs> Uh, I had a, a question about um, uh, politics. I, I noticed uh, it, in some of the videos, it looked like in the background there were some politicians. It looked like they they kind of politicians' uniform. Um, did you have any problems uh, uh, delivering your kind of programs mm -hmm. uh, with local politicians? Were they supportive or were they suspicious of what you were uh, you were doing? Actually, I uh, try to avoid uh, just be independent. But when I attend some day of festivals, I usually meet the same political person over there because it's also important uh, situation, vocations for them to be in there. They provide a gift, provide a prizes for the competition, for the all the activities, so they can win <laughs> their heart, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, but I try to avoid their influence to me, so I don't really uh, get involved of his uh, political activities. Yeah, and uh, as for what you think about the young people, uh, what they did, uh, um, because we saw from the film, you see the, the big crown uh, the head, uh, the, the chief told me it's designed by the young people, because the young people, I already told you the importance for them, especially for elder people, that the young people, they think, uh, they notice the importance, so they decide, the chief told me, uh, last year, they designed, uh, decided to design it by themselves. Uh, most of the young people, they are uh, workers for the, this kind of uh, um, performance uh, uh, company. So they have all the skills, so they design and do it so we can see different lighting or something like that. And <laughs> I think the young people learn quickly and they have 
modern skills, so they create something. And the, the chief feel very happy. He said this year they will they, they do more things. I, I, I observe this activist uh, keep on maybe four years. This year I still want, want to do the record because I can see the changes different. Like I told you yesterday, the elder woman they didn't perform anymore. Yeah, because maybe they are too old. Yeah, they don't want to do it. I, I don't really know the reason. And uh, I show the film to the um, uh, tribal people there. They they don't feel satisfied. They say I only report something superficially, so I need to uh, uh, emphasize the, the, the transmission, especially the Finnish age group. Jump into the other, uh, their mother uh, uh, put the crown on them, change the clothes where they feel very proud of, of about their sons. And they asked me uh, to uh, video it this year. So I have to do some family uh, video uh, type uh, recording. And uh, uh, I think after I started, I found more, so I cannot stop it. That's why I have done it for six years. Then I'm waiting for the other three years. I can answer more questions that you have mentioned for me and give you a good answer. Uh, because in the beginning, I recorded a uh, uh, festival. I think uh, it's interesting. Maybe it's good for my teaching materials. But uh, then I found I need to know more. And then something more. Well, that's what we call anthropology work. With. Yeah, I enjoy it. And uh, I think they are uh, living and changing and creating people. So uh, we are interacting with the global events. So that's also very interesting because you may know for some army uh, age tribe, they name their name uh, by the uh, uh, social events. Like if we go into the moon, they may have the, the person, the age group named Armstrong, <laughs> something like that. So it's not what we think the frozen, they have followed the tradition, actually. They have the more creative way. So it's also part of the um, important things I have to uh, keep on working on. That. Thank you. More questions? Okay. Thank you. More questions? Thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, first, uh, I have two more questions. Yeah, yes. I, I noticed uh, one of the course is called Introductions, Introductions to um, to the Indigenous Peoples of the World. Can you explain <laughs> a little bit about it? It's fascinating. What, what, what is it about? That's what the question was. Second question is really about um, your students. Because you, you said, um, and also uh, we also mentioned about it, uh, probably at most, uh, at best, half of your students are, are uh, indigenous peoples. So, um, and you, most of the time you mentioned about a student serving um, in the tribes are indigenous peoples. What about those other half of the Han Chinese students? What happened to them? Have they also dedicated in some way or another uh, in in this area? Thank you. Okay, the first question about world indigenous people <laughs> in the introduction. It's a talk about basically American, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. So the professors will introduce uh, these four areas they are on indigenous studies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the second question is the hand student, what they are doing. And the first uh, uh, semester, I uh, uh, invite the student from the culture of business. So most of them are hand people. Uh, they don't really know indigenous people. So when they do the service, they feel very interesting and they can learn something new. And, and uh, they even have their own design. They say, oh, because they are, they are trained to be a, manager later. So they know, oh, we have to do this. They give me very nice work schedule. Compared to the next semester, I work with my own student in my department. Um, they are different because they, they are more active and they know the people better. So they can uh, get easy. It's very easy to get along with the other people and they know how to uh, talk and deal with the uh, students. So uh, what I mentioned about uh, my, my students, uh, half of them are indeed a district, but half of them have students. They also enjoy it because they, they what I said about uh, the career planning is from the Han student. 
So it, at that time, I don't think Han or non Han is related. They just want to do things uh, better and get good efforts. That's all. get their trust that they may not give me the right answer so <laughs> it's taken me a long time and, uh, I, I'm kind of easier to get trust because uh, my university is close by uh, the place so uh, for me I, I don't think uh, it's a, a, a political uh, activities but uh, as for the film uh, I think uh, uh, this time I thought uh, Duffy don't show that in the YouTube because I, I need to get their agreement so I already communicate with them because I, I think I should respect that but for one time uh, speech I think it's okay especially for academic reason for educational reason yeah and I, I, I think we have to be very careful about that we have to respect uh, all kinds of their right yeah, don't overuse it. That's why yesterday I show you, I give them back all my uh, pictures and the video and records to them. They can use it freely. Yeah. I don't think you meant that. Okay. Don't worry. It's I not a criticism towards you. Okay. It is more to do with uh, what about them, thinking about them, more official uh, record of, of them, or so it's 
not really about okay. your filming. So. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, uh, just like I said, the 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 head of the region uh, tell the uh, person um, because the professors come and do the research. We have to show her the uh, best, but we we are too loosey, so we have to learn seriously so we can make better effort. So they encourage their people. Also, of course, they. Uh, encourage me to come back because they say, oh, it's not enough, you only see the superficial memories. This, this, if you want to show to your students, please show this. That's what they told me. So I have to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, they said, our uh, Harvest Festival is not so superficial. Because oh, I always tell people, you watch uh, their festival, only think of singing, uh, singing, dancing, and drinking. It's not true. I told them we have education function. We can see the culture. I can say a lot of things, but for them, it's not enough because I have to do some family record. I find other issues. So the, 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 the festival is not only what we have seen for the tourists. They have preparation. After that, they have some things, uh, behaviors, and they uh, prepare for the next year and uh, how they integrate the whole, uh, uh, whole uh, tribes and um, uh, cooperate. Uh, by the age group. It's also the, 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 the spirit, how they united each other. So if it's loose, then they will not come back again. And fortunately, this tribe, they are still very strong. Because before I find this tribe, I uh, actually I go to another tribe. Their festival is, uh, for me, is almost uh, superficial <laughs> for tourists only. Yeah, but this tribe, because I think they still have their traditional spirit, so yeah, I choose them as my field site. Most of them disappear. Oh, they are traditional. <laughs> <So, laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for giving me a chance. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm curious about one thing because you just mentioned like the youth design the crown or yet, uh, last afternoon we like the uh, professor soon mentioned like the youth try to create their own cult cultural space uh, instead of the traditional one yeah due to some gender issue so uh, I'm, I'm thinking of like in 2015 2015, there is a policy from central government called uh, like uh, corporates the youth and the elderly to have some new business, a kind of social enterprise. This policy started in 2015, so it's already like three years past. So in your observation, in your recording, it's some this kinds of business model happened in village, happened happened in trip or it's just a policy in central government. Uh, just what I have uh, found uh, from my research, they need our help about uh, 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 tourist industry. But uh, it's out of my profession, so I didn't really deal with it. So sorry, I cannot answer you that question. But as for my opposition, uh, they start some business that and they get funded. But uh, usually, if uh, they get fund uh, anymore, they may disappear. So that's why <laughs> we we all emphasize they have to do it by their own. They, they apply for money, let the government give them money, and after the money is used out, they, nobody wants to run it. <laughs> this is not successful. related um, talks before the summer school about uh, indigenous issues. And one of the students, uh, although it's in art, he's uh, actually his artworks really focusing on the um, alcoholism uh, problem in tribes. And he's, um, he's actually referring to his own father and his, um, his father's generation, quite a lot of men had this problem. 
So when you're thinking about uh, social work uh, services, will that be part of your um, service, uh, uh, you know, offering to them? Or have you thought about that should be included in the design of the course? Okay, because we have another university, Shiji University, they have an indigenous health center, so they did a lot of things in that tribe already. So I just avoid that, don't overlap mistake. So it's a health issue, not a social issue? Uh, maybe the social work department, uh, maybe right now it's not department yet, they, are, uh, they can deal with that, but uh, for me, Oh, it's out of my profession, <laughs> so I don't want to get involved with it. Thanks. We have time for one or two more questions. Um, would anyone like to ask something? Yeah, but I think uh, I usually use that uh, film, how they uh, uh, try to solve the uh, drug alcoholic problem uh, for my students and uh, uh, we always uh, feel the way uh, it's funny because <laughs> the, after the money disappeared they, they nobody care about it they, they drink more so uh, I think it's not the right way to solve the problem and sometimes people think about the way to solve the problem they say we should get from the education like we to teach the uh, young girl how to protect themselves so they will not get the violence but if we don't educate the elder people, the adult, we only teach the girls, that's not good enough. So I, that's why I think all the activities we should be integrated, we should cooperate by this uh, interdisciplinary uh, activities, then we can get a, a better result. Hello. Uh, I can ask? Sure, last question. Okay, it's, it's yeah. something I, I asked, uh, no, it's a little bit repetitive. Um, I'm quite interested in the um, international um, indigenous uh, networks, um, so uh, your links with other um, indigenous peoples that are uh, having similar, um, uh, but with the young people, I, I mean, all the young indigenous who I train as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, but on, on other issues as well, the cultural issues. And the, I have a link with somebody working in elementary school in Taiwan, working on books to educate about other indigenous cultures around the world, for Maasai, for Sami. Uh, he, so I guess I'm asking which other cultures uh, if you, you, you yeah. uh, link with. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when I was a dean, I hated the uh, 2012 WinHEC uh, in Hualien. WinHEC is a World Indigenous Nation Higher Education as Consulting. So uh, uh, basically, we have uh, indigenous people from 12 uh, countries uh, uh, visit our uh, college. So they already know there's uh, indigenous uh, <laughs> college in Hualien in Taiwan. Uh, Ah, we is our executive leader and for that activities. So if you want to know more, we can learn from him. Uh, also, I attend the WIPC, World Indigenous People Conference on Education. Uh, for my group, we have presentation in Hawaii about uh, the, this kind of issue. So we already have very good uh, connection with the World Indigenous People. Uh, um, unfortunately, they, they hope we can uh, uh, help once again because I am not doing anymore, so I cannot answer it. So <laughs> I transmit to uh, the, the uh, current thing. So and for me, it's, it's very important because uh, I make the world indigenous uh, people know our existence. And uh, they saw my students' performance, they get very uh, excited. They think uh, we provide good, uh, of course, they may be nice, but they say good things to me. But uh, we do build up the connections. And uh, I let my students know there are other indigenous people, they may face in the similar or different situation, how we deal with them. I still remember when we have a conference uh, in our uh, uh, conference room like this, all the indigenous people get together uh, hand by hand and they say no more, no more. At that time I just feel very, uh, uh, oh, what should I say, very touching. I hope all the bad things will not happen anymore. So they say no more. For me, it's a spiritual uh, environment for me. So I, I, for me, that conference right now, I still remember that, that the scene. So.
So I hope we can keep a strong connection. Right now, our uh, young professors, they are doing good things. They are uh, connected with the Australian or New Zealand indigenous people fluently. Um, so I think they are doing a good job. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Wu. Um, so a big round of applause. Thank you. Um, it's wonderful to hear uh, talks on back-to-back -back days, really, and like, wonderful questions, too. Um, before we break for lunch, what we thought we'd do is, since, since we are a recurring and small community here, have everybody just uh, introduce themselves a little bit uh, and uh, say a few words about yourself and uh, so we'll have more to is about. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, uh, I'm Crystal Sang uh, from National Doha University, and I, I'm one of the speaker for the summer school for gender issues and for culture change of indigenous media in Taiwan. Thank you. I'm Vi Yu, uh, the deputy director of the Center of Taiwan Study at SOAS. And uh, I'm sorry for too many questions. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki Orsford at the University of Central Lancashire. I'm also a research associate here at the Centre of Taiwan Studies. Um, hi, I'm Selena, and I was supposed to be here for a summer school, but I got sent to the wrong place, and I was too awkward to like get up. <laughs> yeah, I was too scared, so I was just let's stay here and just listen. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Daryl Sturk, um, a literary translator, mostly uh, uh, short stories and novels from Taiwan, and um, teach translation in uh, Lingnan now, Lingnan Dashi in, in Hong Kong, and um, I'm researching indigenous language translation which in translation studies um, has not been talked about at all, at all. So that's my thing. Hi, I'm Louise. Um, I'm doing a Master's in Chinese Studies at SOAS. Uh, hi everyone, I'm uh, Su Xiangnan uh, from University of California, Santa Barbara, and uh, yeah, I just flew here uh, the day before yesterday. Yeah. And currently I'm working on a comparative colonial studies about Taiwan between pre- and post-World War II period. And also I uh, graduated. Uh, I, mm, it's quite interesting because uh, my undergrad major was Arabic language and Middle Eastern Islamic studies. So I'm currently also working on uh, uh, on a paper about uh, the global Uyghur human rights activism, and which I will uh, present on a conference at New York uh, this September. Hi, I'm Wang Shichen. I'm from Taiwan, but I study the cinema in France right now. So I'm from the University of Strasbourg, but this year I will transfer to the to the Paris Three, Paris Three. I don't know. My, my research is about the industry of the Taiwan cinema, and this, uh, this Thursday morning I will present my research. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. And they are all presenters. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, my name is Nana. I am a Okay, so I'm going to go to the next one. Hello, everyone. I'm Roy. I'm from Berlin, actually. I'm currently studying area studies, Asian African studies at Humboldt University. And uh, yeah, I visit so was Taiwan summer school since last year and I just arrived yesterday, so <laughs> <laughs> So you already heard a lot of my name during this session, right? <laughs> so I'm Aaron Mona. I'm also from the National Taiwan University. I was trained in law and I teach indigenous law in Taiwan. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Jiang Yuan. Uh, I'm part of the Office of SOA Central of Taiwan Study. And I hope you all enjoy our school. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Yanjing. I'm probably the northest Taiwanese student studying indigenous. Um, I'm from Glasgow University, and um, my subject is about the provenance and uh, collecting provenance in an international context. That's a really well name of my course, but uh, probably just talking about re uh, restitutions and repatriate, which is kind of an upcoming trend for Taiwanese museums to study for. And um, yeah, I hope I can give some contribution to the Taiwanese um, indigenous field for the objects that is collected in the museums. And I will share my uh, thesis in the upcoming um, training seminar. Yeah, thank you. Hello, I'm Suzanne Morrison. I'm a faculty member at College of the Atlantic in Maine. I am a feminist, botanist, agroecologist, and I've been invited to teach with a colleague in Taiwan, so I'm here to learn about Taiwan uh, more. I've only been there for three weeks at William, which was beautiful. Um, and I guess I'll just leave it at that. I'm also interested in um, I, I guess that what, I, what I'll be teaching is, um, with my students is about sort of social history of agriculture and what role moving from um, indigenous practices to settled agriculture to um, industrial agriculture, the use of sugar as a means to build the economy, etc. So I'm interested in that particular trajectory um, with the sort of overlaying colonialism on top of that. So if any of you have more agricultural interests, uh, please le uh, let me know, and I'd love to talk about tea as well. So, thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Jen Yen. Uh, I'm an MA student in University of Leeds, a bit so, like, I want to say I'm a novelist, but the girls go for it. Okay, <laughs> University of Leeds. I, I, I always call this as uh, some lack of, like, uh, UK. Yeah, in the middle of Ireland. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, my research is more about historic building regeneration, also cultural industries, social enterprise, and so on. Yeah, also I'm the YouTuber for promoting Chinese traditional tribe actors. So welcome to subscribe my channel. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Tian. I was the Mandarin teacher, but I retired. Uh, this is the third year I attended this summer school. I feel so appreciated, so I did this course. Although I'm the Taiwanese, but I still learn a lot from this course. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Marcel Reyes Cortez. I'm a visual anthropologist, I'm actually an ex alumni of SOAS 20 years ago, and a uh, graduate from Goldsmith as well. Um, I've got a, an arts residency at Taipei at Treasure Hill, which I'm going to start now this October, and also I'm the director of uh, photography and academic research, when we have a conference which is going to start now this September with Bert Burke, and it's basically what I do is I, I try and um, bridge the gap between uh, practicing artists, practicing scholars, uh, with social science, and so I'm both a visual anthropologist and a practitioner and a photographer as well. And that's what I'm going to do when I go to Taipei. I'm going to be looking at the, uh, the social life and the spiritual life of um, works of art, icons, and totems. And so that will be my research that I'm carrying out, and I'm writing a book on the subject as well in, uh, about Taiwan and hopefully become a Taiwanese specialist. Yeah, some point in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm John, and I'm from Taiwan too. Um, <coughs> I, I was very, always very impressed in the ball of Taiwanese study event I have been joining for four years. Uh, maybe I will be a um, chancellor of the Taiwanese community in SOAS. Oh. Yeah, I'm following three years, so yeah. Thank you everyone. Hi, I'm Laura. I studied Chinese at Newcastle University, so beat you um, in a northern <laughs> competition. Um, and I spent a year in Taiwan, and now I work for the Centre of Taiwan Studies here at Sebas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, hello, my name is Tweed. I'm the festival, festival director for Native Spirit Festival. Um, it's in, we screen indigenous, indigenous film from all around the world. Um, it's mostly the Americas, uh, but we want to uh, bring more in from Asia. Um, and we've, uh, the festival, part of the festival is at SOAS. We have a student society here. Um, my background is um, our festival is going to be in October, uh, and we'll have a one-day collaboration with uh, Taiwan Studies dedicated to Taiwanese uh, Indigenous Taiwanese um, cinema. Uh, and my background is arts, uh, education, and health. Um, so I'm very uh, for our festival. I'm very um, keen to uh, help people be educated uh, before we show a lot of films where people don't understand the background or quite what they're seeing. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm David Fell. I run the Taiwan Centre with, with uh, BU Law and, 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 uh, and Jay. And uh, it's time we have, have, a, have a lunch. Yeah. <laughs>